I guess let's continue on with our lecture on hemodialysis. Now yesterday I spoke about chronic renal failure, chronic kidney disease, CKD. And before that we focused on acute kidney injury. So please make sure you look at those lectures before moving on to hemodialysis. Also, um, down below I'm going to write down a couple of videos that you need to look at. So please look at those videos before continuing on with this lecture because it'll make this lecture so much easier to understand because in this lecture I'm really going to focus on the clinical interventions and complications uh, regarding hemodialysis that you must know for the NCLEX exam. So again, this is geared towards you nursing students out there. Now understand that most likely you coming fresh out of school, you may not be dealing with uh, dialysis that much. Again, you're going to need a little bit of experience. So again, we're going to keep it very, very brief, very, very basic and keep it and focused on the material that you need to know for the NCLEX exam. So let's get started. Now remember that in order to perform hemodialysis, you need vascular access first. So the two things that we're going to focus on are arteriovenous fistulas and arteriovenous graft. Now, if the patient has a AV fistula, typically this will be in the form. Now, to gain access to this AV fistula, two large needles will be inserted, just like you saw in the video. Typically, 14 to 16 gauge needle. Now, AV fistulas are preferred because there are less complications with AV fistulas. Now again, the other thing that can be done is a arterial venous graft. And same thing as with the fistulas, two large needles are needed. Again, you're gonna gain access to an artery and access to a vein, hence the name arterial venous. Now with arterial venous grafts, there are more complications. Number one, there's an increased risk of infection. And number two, there's increased risks of occlusions or clotting to occur. Now, in either of these situations, whether there is a arterial venous fistula or arterial venous graft, you must make sure that you know this for the NCLEX exam. You must make sure that you can palpate a thrill or that you can listen, auscultate a brewery. If either of those are not present, it may be indication that there is an occlusion there. Okay, so for the NCLEX exam, you must know that uh, you there has to be a thrill present and also a brewery present, okay? So make sure you know that for the NCLEX exam. Also for the NCLEX exam, you must make sure that you never obtain a blood pressure or that you never perform any venipunctures to the extremity that has that vascular access. So for example, if there's an AV fistula on the left arm, you will never get a blood pressure reading on the left arm and you will never ever perform any venipuncture on that arm. Again, the reason for that is you want to prevent infection. You want to prevent any type of occlusion to that vascular axis site. So let me write these down. Remember again, you must be able to fill a thrill, auscultate the brewery, and again, you will never obtain a blood pressure cuff reading, and you will never do any type of vena puncture. Any blood drawing, any IV insertion on that arm that has, again, either a fistula or a graft. Make sure you know that for the NCLEX exam. Another complication that may occur is something known as Steele syndrome. You may see this on the NCLEX exam, on the NCLEX exam so I'll briefly mention it. Now, if you saw on the video, there's actually a very large uh, blood vessel where the needles will go into. 
So if you think about it, there's a large amount of blood going to that area. So an easy way to remember what steel syndrome is, well, again, if you think about that large blood vessel, again, there's a lot of blood flow to that area. If there is a lot of blood flow to that area, that decreases the amount of blood to the rest of the extremity. So in steel syndrome, patients typically complain of tingling, numbness. And if you were to check out the capillary refill, you, know that you would notice that there is a decrease in the capillary refill, greater than three seconds. And again, this is because a lot of blood supply is going to the arteriovenous fistula or the graft site. Because again, that is a very, very large vessel. So again, the amount of blood flow to the rest of the extremity is decreased. Another thing that you must know for the NCLEX is that heparin is added when the dialysis occurs. Now heparin is added in order to prevent blood clots. And just like you saw in the video, there was a mention of heparin being added again to prevent blood clots. Now make sure that you're always obtaining or checking vital signs every 30 to 60 minutes. Reason for it is you want to make sure that you're not dropping blood pressure down. You're not causing hypotension. Remember, you're getting uh, rid of fluids. You're removing blood to remove waste, but along with that blood, you're also going to be removing a fluid. Again, remember there's no urine production, so that fluid is going to accumulate in the body. So another reason for dialysis is to get rid of some of that excess fluid. Well, if you get rid of too much, you're going to cause hypotension, a decrease in blood pressure. But in order for you to know that you've caused a severe decrease in blood pressure, you need to obtain vital signs. So again, you need to do this every 30 to 60 minutes. Number seven, you must educate your patient. You must know that typically hemodialysis may be performed about three days per week for about three to, three to four hours. So this is time consuming. Now let's focus on some complications of hemodialysis. Number one, just as I briefly mentioned a little bit ago, hypotension. Remember that again, you have no urine production, so naturally you're going to begin to accumulate fluid in the body, fluid overload. We talked about pulmonary edema, pulmonary effusion, increased blood pressure due to that fluid retention. Well, again, the patient is going to be undergoing uh, dialysis. As a result, you're going to be filtering the blood and removing some of that water. Well, if you remove too much, you will cause hypotension. So that is a complication. Number two, muscle cramps. And this has to be, this is due to the electrolyte imbalances. Number three, loss of blood. Remember, this patient is going to be getting heparin, so that can cause some of this. Also, you're going to be gaining access to those uh, grafts or fistulas. Just like you saw in the video, there's a lot of blood coming out. There's a lot of pressure there, so you'll have some blood loss due to that. Also, again, blood is going through the hemodialysis machine, so if not all of the blood is returned, again, you will cause loss of blood or blood loss. That again will result in hypotension. Number four, increased risk for either hepatitis B or hepatitis C. For that reason, patients are strongly encouraged to get the hep B vaccine. Now there is no vaccine for hep C, so again, Typically, patients are advised or encouraged to take the Hep B vaccine.
from five. Anemia. And this is due to uh, several different mechanisms or reasons. Again, here we have a loss of blood because again, uh, maybe not all of the blood that was taken out was put back in. Again, remember on our lectures of chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury, we talked about how more specifically in chronic kidney disease, chronic renal failure, the kidneys will not be able to produce erythropoietin. As a result of that, you have no red blood cell production. Therefore, again, anemia will be the end result. So these patients will be given epigen, just like you saw in the video, something like Procrit. Again, these are, this is in an attempt to bring hemoglobin, hemoglobin levels back up. Number six, very important for you to know or understand is, let's say the patient, you come in to the floor, you have a patient that's about to undergo dialysis, let's say they're supposed to go at 7 a.m. They have seven o'clock medications that need to be given. Will you give them, yes or no? Well, the answer to that is no. You're going to hold those medications. Because if you give something for like high blood pressure, and then you send that patient off to get dialysis, that medication is going to be removed through dialysis. So again, you're going to withhold medications until after the procedure. 